What's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a newer single board computer from the guys over at Friendly Arm. This is the Nano PC T4. It's powered by a Rockchip RK3399 CPU and it comes in at the price of around $120. The price might seem a little high for a single board computer, but this thing is jam packed with features and we're going to be taking a look at the Android side of things in this video. They do offer a few Linux distributions, and that's the main reason I got one of these. But today, I wanted to go ahead and get this out of the way because I know a lot of people are going to be asking about it. We're going to be testing out Android. Before I get into all the specs, I just wanted to do a little size comparison of some other popular single board computers like the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus here. As you can see, it's a bit bigger than the Raspberry Pi, but it should pack quite a punch for its size. And here's another popular board, the Odroid XU4. Now this is the Q version. Q stands for quiet. It just has a bigger heat sink on it. Nothing has changed from the original XU4. But yeah, the T4 is a bit bigger than both of these units. But on paper, this thing should be more powerful than the XU4 and the Raspberry Pi. Just throw this on top here so you can see the difference. I mean, it's not that much bigger than the Pi itself. So the whole Nano PC T4 kit does come with a few accessories. We have a heat sink. This is going to be pretty much mandatory to throw a heat sink on this. I have messed around with the RK3399 in the past, and it tends to get a little bit hot. I will be doing tests with a fan and without. We also have a Wi-Fi antenna and a Bluetooth antenna. The T4 also comes with a case, which is a big plus in my opinion. This is just a little plexiglass top and bottom. It also comes with some hardware to mount it. I've always liked these kind of exposed cases. I think they look really cool. And after you peel this plastic off of here, it is super clean plexiglass under here. I'm gonna go ahead and mount it up, take a few pictures of it, and we're gonna go over the specs. Like I mentioned, this thing is jam packed. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up their spec sheet because I know I'll miss something if I try to make one on my own. So this is kind of a spec overview that they offer on their website. I will leave a link to the Friendly Arm website if you want to check these out. You can also buy one of these on Amazon. I'm just going to start up at the top left where it says power key. So first up, we have the power key. We have our power LED, micro SD card, ADC, 4 gigabytes of LPDDR3 RAM in dual channel mode. Now I've actually seen spec sheets that say that this is DDR4. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I'm going to have to investigate when I boot this up. 40 GPIO pins here, it's laid out just like the Raspberry Pi, an EDP connector, an MIPI DSi-1 connector, Rockchip RK3399 CPU. Now this is a 6-core CPU, it uses the big little ARM architecture. Two of the cores are clocked at 1.8 GHz, four of the cores are clocked at 1.4 GHz. A 3-pin fan connector, a boot button, recovery button, two USB 2.0 ports, HDMI 2.0 for 4K 60fps, an onboard microphone, 3.5mm audio jack out, one USB 3.0 port, gigabit ethernet. This does take 12 volts in, so it's not a 5 volt system. They do supply you with a 12 volt 2 amp power supply with a 2.5 millimeter barrel jack. Reset, USB type C for display out, or you can branch this off into USB 3.0 connectors. A debug UART interface, a real-time clock connector, MIPI CSI1, CSI2, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. It's 802.11bg in and AC. The Bluetooth is 4.1 with dual mode. And finally, for the top, we have two IPX antenna connectors, and I showed you those when I was doing the little unboxing. And to top it all off, on the very bottom here, we have an IR receiver. It will work with a programmable remote and an M.2 M key SSD slot, or whatever kind of peripheral you want to use in this M.2 slot. And it supports NVMe PCIe X4. So you can get some pretty fast speeds out of an M.2 SSD on this board. So this board was actually designed for AI, but there's really no reason we can't consume media on it, be it retro games, newer games, or 4K content. It's capable of 4K 60fps with different formats. Not all formats will run at 60fps, and not all bit rates will run at 60. So a lot of people may not have used Friendly ARM boards. They're also known as Friendly Elect or Nano Pi. One of the things I like about this company is they're always supporting their product. Every time I go to their download page, 
there's something new for a board that I got from them two years ago. The only downside that I've ever had with this company is community support. There's not a lot of people out there that have these boards, therefore there's not a lot of community development. But the company itself is doing a good job. They have three distros already available for this, and I'm sure they're going to put out more over time. So with all of that out of the way, let's get into some testing. I know this is going to be a long video. I'm going to be testing Android in this video. Stay tuned to the channel if you want to see some Linux distributions running on here because that's what I'm excited about, but I know everybody's going to want to see Android running. All right, guys, so here we are with the latest build of Android from Friendly Arm. This is Android 7.1.2. They are working on Android 8.0. Now the whole reason I got this board was not to run Android on because I have an Nvidia Shield that'll definitely outperform this. I wanted to run a full-blown Linux desktop on here and they do offer a few variants. But I know that a lot of people are going to want to get a hold of something like this and run Android on it. So this first video here will be dedicated to Android. I'm not going to go much into detail but I do want to show you some stuff running on here and some benchmarks. First thing I always do is head over to IDA64. This is the manufacturer, Friendly Arm, Nano PC T4. We have the RK3399. This is a six core CPU, four gigabytes of RAM. Now online, some people say this is DDR4. Some people say it's DDR3. In my opinion, I believe it is rocking DDR3 RAM. Four Cortex A53 cores at 1.4 gigahertz. These are the little cores and two Cortex A72 cores at 1.8 gigahertz. These are the big cores. So all in all, it's a six core rock chip CPU. For the GPU, we have a Mali T860 MP4. It is a quad core GPU capable of OpenGL 3.2. Now, one thing that I really wanted to see from this 3399 CPU was Vulkan support. And there is rumor going on around that Vulkan support will be brought to this chip very shortly. And if it is, this will definitely increase performance in any kind of emulator or game that takes advantage of Vulkan. But right now, it will only do OpenGL. Version of Android, 7.1.2, Nougat. Now, one thing I've noticed about these Rock Chip 3399 CPUs are they do get pretty hot. You can increase performance if you put a fan on this unit. I did a benchmark without a fan. Then I added one, and I want to show you what kind of performance we gain from just adding a very small fan. First up, we have Geekbench 4. This is the first benchmark I ran without a fan. Single core, 1298. Multi-core, 2797. With a fan, single core, 1271. Multi-core, 2957. So it's not much of an increase here with a fan added but the fan really does help with GPU intensive benchmarks and games. Next up, I ran an Intuitu benchmark. Now, first I'm gonna show you the score without the fan. We scored a 75,325. On the CPU score, we have a 20,286. GPU, 22,962. UX, 27,615. And memory, 4,462. This is really not a bad benchmark for like an Android box. This is one of the highest benchmarking box that I've seen besides the Nvidia Shield. But when I added a fan, performance was increased dramatically. With a fan, this is a very small five volt fan is powered from the GPIO header on the board itself. We scored a 111,076. So as you can see across the board, the benchmarks were up, especially on the CPU. Without a fan, the CPU benchmarked at 20,286. With a fan, 43,196. So all in all, I suggest putting a fan on your rock chip. Even if you're running a Android box with a rock chip 3399, you will increase performance. Next up, I want to test some 4K video playback. Now this thing is going to stream 4K online very well from YouTube, Amazon, Netflix, as long as you can get 4K content from Netflix, because if you download it from the Google Play Store that's installed, you only get the phone version. I don't usually store any of my 4K content on any hard drive or anything like that. I usually just stream it from Netflix. So the only two I have here are Big Buck Bunny, 4K, 30 FPS, MP4. Also have the same file, but at 60. I've tested this on a lot of Android devices. A lot of them struggle with the 60 FPS version. First up, let's go with the 30. 
This is running from an external USB 3.0 drive. Alright, so it looks like it's handling the 30 FPS version pretty good. Let's go over to the 60. I already noticed a little bit of stuttering here and there. Now, I've had real trouble playing this file from an external drive on a lot of different Android machines. The only one that's ever been able to handle it is the NVIDIA Shield. And it actually just skipped the whole section of the video here without me touching a thing. The bird is supposed to get hit with a rock. It completely skipped that part. Now, I know that a lot of people aren't going to be using 60 FPS 4K videos. But this thing might struggle trying to run them from a USB 3.0 drive like you just saw. If you want to stream 4K content, this thing's going to work fine. So the next thing I wanted to test was a little bit of emulation. This doesn't do a great job with PSP, at least not yet. Until Vulkan is supported, you're not going to have a great time with it. I'm at 1x resolution, OpenGL, relatively easy game to run, which is Burnout. Back up. Oh, I got my controller connected. FPS is in the top right-hand corner. I also have a fan on the unit. I've never really had good luck with Rock Chip and PPSSPP. So PSP emulation might be out of the question until Vulkan is supported. What about Nintendo 64 emulation? I gotta say, it actually handles it pretty well. FPS is listed in the top left hand corner. This is Conker's Bad Fur Day. Really hard game to emulate. But as you can see, it's handling it pretty good. I'm actually surprised at how well this is working. I'm just going to jump down here. Got some water going on and everything like that. We'll see if it lags out. Not bad at all. If it's running Conkers this well, it'll handle a lot of other N64 games really well. And finally, I wanted to test a native Android game. We're going to go with PUBG. It is pretty hard to run on lower end devices, so we'll try it out here. So unfortunately, I forgot to turn on my sound capture when I was playing this part. I don't really enjoy playing this, so I didn't want to go through it again. It looks like it's handling it pretty good. I mean, it's not like a top of the line $900 Android phone, 
but you could get by playing PUBG on one of these units. I have it set on the balanced graphic option. High and ultra high are not available for this device yet. It's either low or balanced, so I went with balanced. All right, so overall, I'm actually enjoying messing around with this. I cannot wait to swap this Android build out for a Linux build. I will leave links to their website if you want to check this out. There's a lot of stuff that I didn't go over here, and there's tons of stuff you can do with a board like this. If you guys have any requests for Linux applications running on this unit, please let me know in the comments below. I will be throwing a few videos together this weekend. Hopefully I can have something up on Sunday, and then I'll put out maybe one or two more by the end of next week. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, don't forget to turn notifications on so you know when I upload my next video. And like always, thanks for watching.